After learning about Pavlov's dogs and classical conditioning and finally understanding that one scene in the office, I'm sure the last thing you want to hear about is another type of learning. However, operant conditioning is actually much easier to understand and it's much more applicable to our daily lives. Moreover, it's way more high yield on the MCAT, which I know is all that we care about. So let's learn about it. Operant conditioning is learning through reinforcements and punishments. A reinforcement is something that increases the likelihood of a behavior happening again. It's like a reward. I think that's the second time I've said that in one of these videos. My brain is mush. A punishment is something that decreases the likelihood of a behavior happening again. So we got reinforcements and punishments. There's a second part to this type of conditioning though, and that's positive and negative. Go ahead and get it out of your head that positive means something good is happening and negative means something bad is happening because that's not what we're talking about here. Positive means that a stimulus has been introduced to the scenario. So positive reinforcement would mean that you present a stimulus and that stimulus is going to increase the likelihood of a behavior happening again. So think of giving a kid a piece of candy after they pick up the toys in their room. You are presenting a stimulus and so it's positive and you are also enforcing that behavior and increasing the likelihood that it's going to happen again. So that's a reinforcement, positive reinforcement. You can also have positive punishment. Think of spanking a kid after they throw a tantrum. You want to decrease the likelihood that they're going to throw a tantrum and so you are presenting a stimulus um, in the form of spanking them. Negative means you take a stimulus away. So negative reinforcement is probably the weirdest one of all of these to think about. Imagine if your kid got good grades, so you took away their chores for the week. You want to reinforce the good grades, so you take away a stimulus in the form of the burden of their chores, I guess. I'm not the greatest at these examples. Negative punishment would be like if your kid snuck out, so you took away their car keys. I think I use kids in every one of these examples. I'm not I'm not creative, sorry. The best way to think about these is to come up with your own scenarios and also keep in mind that the way that these scenarios are worded can kind of change what conditioning is actually called. Think about my example for negative reinforcement, taking away the burden of a child's chores um, as a reinforcement for them making good grades or whatever I said. But the exact same scenario could be worded as you are giving your child more time to relax or hang out with their friends. And in that case, that would be positive reinforcement, even though it's the same like scenario in reality. It's just the way it's worded. Okay, now the flip side of operant conditioning is reinforcement schedules. And so, of course, we're pretty much just talking about reinforcement here. You can divvy up reinforcement by how often you give a stimulus and by how reliably you give it. It's hard to explain in words. So let's give some terms and some examples. So what I was getting at when I was talking about how reliably something is reinforced is the reinforcement or the reward given at predictable times after you exhibit the goal behavior. For example, do I give my employee a bonus every 50 sales he makes? That would be considered fixed. If I was more sporadic about it and I gave him a bonus after 50 sales and then again after 15 sales and then again after 100 sales, that would be considered variable. So fixed and variable are two aspects of the reinforcement schedules. The other characteristic is do I introduce a reward after a certain time or after a certain number of instances? For example, do I give my hamster downstairs a yogi after every three times they spin on the wheel? That would be considered ratio because it's a number of instances. If I gave my hamster a yogi after one full minute of them spinning on the wheel, that would be considered interval. So interval is a time thing and ratio is a number of instances thing. Okay, so you got fixed and variable and you got ratio and interval. Those are the different ways you can classify these reinforcement schedules, but they're actually like kind of mixed up. And let me show you a picture to make this more simple. So you can see here that if you kind of put fixed and variable on two ends of a spectrum and ratio and interval on another end of a spectrum, you kind of end up with these four different types of reinforcement schedules. And you guys can kind of pause this and read, um, what fixed ratio versus variable ratio, et cetera, et cetera, what all that means. The last thing you should know about the reinforcement schedules is that variable ratio is the best reinforcement schedule for producing a behavior. 
It's actually what gambling is, and it's one reason why gambling is so addictive. Think about it. You don't get a reward every time you pull the lever on the slot machine, so it's variable, and the reward is hypothetically given after a certain number of instances of you pulling the lever, so that's ratio. It's so addicting because you don't get a reward every time you pull that lever, but theoretically, if you just keep going, you'll win the jackpot. You probably won't have to rank the others as far as like how successful they are at eliciting a goal behavior. And to be honest, I don't really know for sure, but I would imagine after variable ratio, I would imagine the other variable, variable interval would uh, be more successful than either of the fixed ones, just for the same reasoning. Like you never know when you're going to get that reward. So you just kind of keep going. All right, so that's operant conditioning in a nutshell. I hope that was helpful for you guys. And if it was, then you will really, really, really love the book that John and I just wrote. Um, we're going through the editing process right now, and then it will be up on our website. So check down in the description below. That's where we will put the link when it is actually up um, on our website. Let us know if you guys are enjoying this little high yield series that me and John are doing and what else you want to see down in the comments below. See you next time.